it's Larry Lursey. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at Luminar 4, specifically the export features. You know, you use the software, create a very cool image, and then how do you get it out and off to the lab or to Instagram, social media, whatever it is you're wanting to do with the image. I'm going to show you how to take it from that point of creating an image, how to export it, and get it out to the platform of your choice. By the way, as an added bonus, at the end of the video, I'm going to also tell you how you can purchase the software at a discounted price if you decide it's something you'd like to have. And as always, before we get started, please take a second to subscribe if you haven't done so. really is great to have people coming back for more and more videos. So, if you're ready to go, let's roll the intro. Okay, so here we are in Luminar 4. It's important to point out that I am in the standalone version of Luminar 4 right now, not the plugin version. You can use it as a Photoshop plugin, which is how I will use it the majority of the time, just because it works better with my Photoshop workflow that way. But you can use it as a standalone, and you actually have some extra features that way. If you're using it as a plugin right now, you your library tab will be here, but it'll be grayed out where you can't access it and you won't have access to some of these different features up here like this export button. So if you're not seeing that, it's probably because you're using it as a plugin. You want to make sure you're using it as the standalone. However, I'm going to show you both ways. I'm going to go ahead and show you right now using the standalone version and then we'll follow up with doing it under the plugin version. So if you really want to do it through the plugin, I'll show you the steps to do it that way. So we've got our image here that's that, that's ready to go. Um, we went through and did several things to it and made it look much fancier. And so now what we need to do is decide what we're going to do with it. I'm going to start out by preparing this for Instagram. Let's say I want to crop it to a square and prepare it to upload to Instagram. I'm going to go here to the um, Canvas tab and you'll see here is Crop and Rotate. You are going to pick the aspect ratio of square and we will just crop it. It's actually it's pretty good about like that. And I will hit done. So now we've got it all cropped ready to go. So what we want to do is go up here to this export button and when we click on it we've got a whole bunch of different options here. Uh, sending it to specific things like mail, smug mug, the uh, open in is great for if you want to toss this image into another program. From here you want to go into Photoshop, into Aurora, uh, even Lightroom. So um, that, that is to go to a specific program that you're going to do something else with it. We're basically going to just save it, export it. So we're going to go up here, export to image, and it's going to bring up this little dialog box with a lot of things to, to fill out, a lot of options you have. First thing I would recommend is I like to label this for where it's going or what it is. So I'm going to put IG at the end that just tells me that I'm doing this for Instagram. First option you have here, of course, other than where you're putting it, pretty self-explanatory, but the first option you're going to have is sharpening where it will apply some sharpening for you. I'm not a fan of doing sharpening at this stage. I would rather do sharpening when I've got control of it either in this program or in Photoshop or whatever where I can apply that uh, sharpening and look at it before or after, maybe dial it back, add more, or whatever, until it's just how I like it. I don't want to do it during the export. So my suggestion would be to go ahead and get it how you want it before this stage and don't mess with that sharpening. Then we've got resize where we will go through and decide what size we want it to be. Anything from a uh, you know, long edge, short edge, these are great for if you're putting something on uh, maybe creating images for a web page and they say you want the images to be 800 pixels wide. You can say I want the long edge 800 and um, do it that way. We're going to do dimensions and it's going to bring up two side-by-side -side dimensions and um, for Instagram I will usually do mine at 1080 by 1080 so we're going to go ahead and put 1080 by 1080 and uh, that's going to give us basically 1080 by 1080 square of this image which we've already cropped. Color space is you know kind of depends on where you're putting the image. You know Profoto and uh, Adobe RGB are going to give you a probably better color space, wider color space than sRGB but it really depends on the platform that you're using and uh, for example your lab may want a certain color space 
for you to send in files, and so you need to know that before you send it. I found that sRGB is probably the most common, most popular color space as far as finding places that you're going to upload to. They generally want sRGB, so that's always a safe bet if you don't know which one to go with. And then your format, in, in this case we're going to just do a JPEG because we're sending it um, online, but you have the option of doing a TIFF, PDF, uh, Photoshop file, whatever it is that you specifically need for a project. But in our case it's an Instagram, we've got it cropped, we'll do it as a JPEG. I keep the quality high the most of your online platforms are going to go ahead and knock it down anyways, but I'd rather let them knock it down to to their maximum than me knock it way down and I go too far and take away more quality than I need to. That's just kind of my personal strategy. But once we have it how we want it, you just hit save. It's going to go to work up here exporting it to that folder and you will have that image ready to go. So let's drop back real quick. I'm going to hit this little uh, do over button here and get us back to the original. And let's pretend that we want to uh, do a five by seven uh, of this to send to our lab, and they want uh, you know five by seven at 300. So we're going to click on crop rotate again. We'll pick the five by seven ratio, and then we're going to you know drag it in and out, get it exactly how we want it. Um, not crazy about the five by seven format on this one, but we'll just ride it out since that was the plan. Got to crop to that it's the right size now, at least the right ratio, and uh, we'll hit done. There we go. Now all we need to do is export it on out. So we'll come up here to export, export to image. This one we will call 5x7 because this is going to be a 5x7. We'll put it in the same folder. Not going to mess with sharpening. This time on the dimensions we will work on um, either the 5 or the 7 side and so let's do 5 just for easier math and what we'll want to do is we know it's 5 inches at 300 an inch so that is going to be 1500 it's going to need to be 1500 along the short edge there we go so that's going to give us 1500 it'll calculate the length and that should give us a 5 by 7 at 300 All right. Color space, I'm going to leave it sRGB and JPEG 100, ready to go when we export it. And that's all you have to do. Now we've got an Instagram version and a 5x7 ready to go to the lab sitting in that folder. Now let's jump back and show you what it would look like to do this export process from Photoshop. All right, so here we are in the plugin version of Luminar 4. We've gone in through Photoshop and used it as a plugin, and we've got our image sitting here that we've worked on, got it all jazzed up, it's ready to go. So let's say that you want to now export this to print it, to um, send it to Instagram, whatever you want. You'll notice that we have a, a different kind of a bar up here. We've got apply up here where we're basically going to apply the effects we've done and drop it back into Photoshop. Uh, you don't have that export module up here and we've got library but you can't click on it. It's grayed out. So we've got our image all done like this. All we would do at this point is just simply hit apply. Let it process here for a second. And that would put us back into Photoshop where we could either uh, process it further or just use our normal export process to um, move this on out. So we'll run through it really quickly here. Um, if we wanted to go to Instagram, for example, we could just grab the crop tool here and up here we would set it 1080 by 1080. Move it to how we want. Hit the check mark. And then we would just go up here and do file save as. Call this one um, IG2. Save it as a JPEG and hit save. In this case, I've got the JPEG set to 11. You can do 12, whichever. Um, and there we go. So you would just go through your regular process of cropping to whatever sizes you want and, and things like that in Photoshop. So that's basically how you would get an image from Luminar out to either Photoshop or just directly processing it from the um, standalone program into a format that you can use somewhere else.
So that's the basic process, whether you're in the standalone or the plugin, that's how you're going to export that to the media of your choice. There's a link in the description if you'd like to download the software and give it a try yourself. And if you do, make sure you use the coupon code LARRYPHOTO and you will get a discount and actually get the software at an even better price than it already is. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments below. And I hope to see you again next week for more videos. Take care. Bye-bye.